Hi, my name is Marcel Fon, I'm a classical guitar player and today I want to talk about what you have to keep in mind if you're thinking to buy your next guitar. First and foremost, it's obviously very important that you settle for which guitar shape or which type of guitar you want to go for and that decision would be most probably based on which type of music you want to play. Obviously, if your dream is to play a Van Halen solo, you're not going to choose classical guitar. But if you love Bach or classical music or a finger picking type of stuff, it might then be a very good choice to start with classical guitar. So the first thing that you need to set is your budget. How much you can or you're willing to spend on a guitar. Now, if you do some research, you will see that you can buy a guitar pretty much by 50 euros or 100 euros quite inexpensively. But of course, if you want a study guitar that already sounds good, it will be about the 200 to 600, 700. And then from a thousand euros to 3000, they are already quite nice guitars. Probably best choice for young students that are going to the conservatory. Some people might have different rates in mind, but I have seen from my experience that there are guitars already, concert guitars, really good instruments priced at about 3,000, that is very low, but as a standard thing is considered that about the 6,000 euros to about 10 is what the concert guitar costs. Why I want you to establish the budget just as a first thing? Because it's really, really bad when you find a guitar that it sounds beautiful, that it just fits perfect, that is just the guitar that you want so bad and then they tell you that it's probably, I don't know, 3,000 euros more than you can afford and that your heart goes like a million pieces. Now, something that is actually a priority is to decide the size of the guitar. And that is an aspect that is often ignored in the guitar world. But if you use your logic, you wouldn't just go to a shoe shop and buy shoes that are maybe five sizes larger than you would wear. Or also, if it's too small, it's just plain painful. Nowadays, it's slowly catching the idea that classical guitar players might need more specific and more variety in sizes for the instrument. So we measure the guitar the distance between here, the bridge, and here. So typically, it used to be 66 centimeters for flamenco guitars and 65 as a main standard for any other classical guitar. Through the last years, we can see that more and more guitar makers are producing guitars that are 64 centimeters. Most of female guitar players, we have smaller hands and a bit narrower. So it's quite an obvious thing that there's a guy who has the fingers a third bigger than me he will feel a lot more comfortable playing that instrument than I will. So I also heard around that there is this rule, if from here to here, the opening of your left hand is um, 20 centimeters or less, you have to go for a 64 uh, guitar. And if it's more, 65 is fine for you. I find this rule very superficial and really not taking into consideration all the fine movements that uh, the hand of a guitar player needs to do because we have this extension but we also have this extension and I don't think it really makes sense having that there are girls who have very very small hands and guys who have huge hands playing a guitar that is just one centimeter difference. So I might only give a pass to this rule for a complete beginner because a complete beginner has no pieces to play, has no orientation about what's a good position, what should be doing, nothing. At that point, it's very, very difficult for that person to decide whether one size will be better than another. So in that case, you can follow this 20 centimeters rule. And later on, as you have learned to play something in between, so practice, I would recommend you just go a little bit more in detail. When you test the guitar, you will be able, with the help of your teacher, to analyze how the lateral movements work, how the stretches work for you in different sizes, and then buy a guitar that is a lot better for the size of your hand. Which, this brings me to the next point. If you're already a guitar player and you feel that the size of your guitar might be pushing you down in your development and your playing, then here's a tip for you. It could be a good idea for you to go to these huge guitar stores where they have 
all sizes, from kids to adults. And then you will see that because there are guitars that are made in factories, there's larger variety of sizes that you can choose. The larger the store, the more variety you will find. That's an obvious thing. The good thing is that you can make a pre-scan through their website and just make a list of different sizes of guitars. And then when you go there, just ask to try them. So try scales, try a pages, try a piece where that has just one melodic line. Try a piece that is very polyphonic. Try just blocks of chords in low and high positions. And try to narrow down this way, which is the size that really makes you the most comfortable. So take one day and spend an entire day just trying guitars. As you're trying the guitar, observe how thick is the fretboard from, from this perspective. Um, how is that helping you or how is that bothering you? Try to prioritize a guitar that makes you feel comfortable. That it feels it's inviting to play and makes your life easier, not harder. Because a, a guitar that is really hard to play, it might damage a lot your playing, making it really rough, really heavy, losing the musicality, losing the big lines, forcing you to put accents on things that where you should not accent just because it's a lot harder. So. I see many musical benefits why a comfortable instrument that suits your needs is going to make you a better player. Once you have gone to these stores and checked all the different sizes and seen which one works the best for you, then if you're looking for a good quality classical guitar, then you can either just contact a guitar maker if you already know which one you like and just ask to have the guitar built, just like I did, or go to these great shops, for instance, like from the top of my head, I could say Casa Luthier there in Barcelona, um, Sika's Guitars in Germany, or the Guitar Salon International in Los Angeles. These type of shops, they have so many guitars of amazing guitar makers. It's the best setting you can have to compare different guitars when you can play them in the same room, one after the other, see how they feel, see how they sound. Because if you try one here and then a week later one there, you lose the perspective of how they actually sound. So do your research and see which shops you have nearby where you live. Then a second filter we have to choose either we want spruce or cedar. So as a general characteristic, spruce is kind of warmer in sound and it has a faster response and spruce is a bit more slower response. You have to dig more into it but most of players who play spruce is because it has more colors and it has a density in the sound that it can be very very attractive. Generally a spruce right off the bat you need to develop the sound and work it out otherwise it tends in the beginning when it's just recently made to sound a little bit switched off so you need to kind of wake up the guitar by playing it playing it and give it some time. Check the details Check if the guitar is well tuned in all frets. It might sound stupid, but when a guitar is built, it's a whole science behind having every fret in tune. An electronic tuner can be of great help for this. You can use, for instance, the guitar tuna. Um, I like it very much. I use it personally because it's uh, quite precise for, and it's free, so that's great. However, if you feel that after having tuned the guitar properly, there is still some notes around you're checking and something sounds completely off. That can be for two things. It can be a defective guitar, which that's the worst part, or it can be that it's just the old strings. And that's not to blame, obviously, the music shops or anything, but they don't always have new strings on the guitars because people are trying them all the time and it would be super expensive for them to have guitars every time with super new sets. But if you're balancing out within two guitars and you like them both, but one has super creepy, ugly sounding strings that are completely rotten, then ask for a change. Ask the shop guy to put a new set. Most of the time, the problems of the tuning will go away when you put a new set of strings. But if not, then that's a big problem that I would really not advise you to take that guitar because that's nothing you can do about it. As a last thing, if you see that the um, tuning pegs or the tuning machines here, um, they are not 100% accurate or they are a little bit harsh or that's something you can change. That's something that is very easy to replace. You just need to unscrew and you can replace for a new set. And that is usually the, the machinery of a guitar. That's usually one of the things that guitar makers buy cheaper to try to keep the guitar on a lower budget. 
it is possible that you find a great sounding guitar and it's cheaper just because it has a little bit less quality mechanics or it has um, less varnish, it has just the, the first layer of varnish and or maybe it has less decoration that's also a way that they try to make it cheap i did that before i bought the concert guitar that i have now and it's really great because you have an instrument that instead of three thousand euros you have to pay thousand you know it's actually a, it's a good option in that case if you're interested for something like this i think you can only just ask from guitar maker to guitar maker if they do this kind of things or if they could build something like this for you or if they have already something like this ready in stock let's say and lastly but not least is follow your heart i mean part of playing an instrument part of choosing a guitar is also just falling in love with it for me personally i think that is actually a very important aspect of buying a guitar because you want to buy an instrument that you're thinking every day oh, just, i just i want to go and play that guitar i just i need to go to play you have to it helps you keep this burning feeling of just practicing and making music and that i think is very very important actually just remember that every guitar has its own tiny defects you will really not find the perfect guitar that is defectless there has to be a compromise between what you're looking for if you're looking for volume then go for um, double tops if you're more for a traditional sound more purity more colors maybe try a traditional construction. There is obviously a lot to learn here and it's really hard to speak about sound quality without you having the chance to, to listen live this. So I would recommend that if you're looking for a guitar, doesn't matter if you're an amateur or already studying in a conservatory, just go to festivals. They have in every festival expositions with guitar makers. It's a great place where to start discovering things, talk to them, see how they build the guitar, see what they use. And then as you try them, you get familiar with the woods they use or with the system of construction that they use and how that appeals to you as a player. Just remember that for instruments, size matters and matters a lot. So do not rush to buy a new guitar. Make sure that you're confident that the size you're buying will fit you as a player and find that guitar that not only has a nice, beautiful sound that you love, but also helps you develop your musicianship the best. I hope this video gave you some insight about choosing your next guitar. If you think there is some aspect that I didn't mention that is for you particularly important, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be reading you. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.